friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Zita. And on my channel, I do DIYs and makeovers on a budget. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Oakwell Home. So let's get started on today's DIYs and see what I've created. Today, I'm participating in the Thrift Flip Road Trip hosted by our friends Trish and Kay at Crafting Cousins and Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. So once you finish watching my video, don't forget to go in my description box and check out the link where you'll find a playlist for all the other amazing creators. So today I'm going to be doing a couple of DIYs for you. First, I'm going to be making over this huge vase that I thrifted at my local thrift store and it's quite a large one I've had it sitting in my craft room for a while so today's the day where I'm going to be making it over uh, so I didn't want it silver so the first color that I'm going to paint this is uh, black because I want it to uh, be a dark color but I want to have some white on this as well at uh, by the time I'm finished with it. But I'm going to give the the first coat, the base coat, uh, a black coat and I'm using some homemade chalk paint here um, which I ran out of so I didn't want to make some more. I was trying to get it done in a hurry so I just uh, painted the remainder with some uh, black acrylic uh, paint that I had on hand. But I got mostly chalk paint on there. So it had more of a, a matte finish with the uh, chalk paint. And I wanted this uh, vase to have that matte kind of look instead of like a shiny look. And I want it to uh, be a pottery barn inspiration. So uh, it turned out absolutely beautiful. So the next layer that I'm going to use here is a brown paint which I found in the oops aisle at my local uh, hardware store and um, I'm just adding some water to that because I didn't want like a really dark brown I just kind of wanted a, a more muted brown so I just added some water to it and uh, made it kind of a lighter brown so I'm rubbing that on with a sponge um, that I have that I ripped apart uh, and I'm just dabbing it on and then I'm rubbing it on and as you can see you can see the paint kind of running down on the vase I'm kind of letting it drip and then sponging it in and then rubbing it back and forth so just kind of whatever technique you want to uh, use and see what you like the best I find you gotta you gotta try some different techniques like for uh, you know dabbing rubbing or letting it drip just to see what kind of uh, look that you like and uh, I've done a few of these vases and I've tried some different techniques so I thought I'd try something a little different and um, to see if I could get it looking like those expensive pottery barn vases that are so beautiful but this one turns out just as beautiful as the pottery barn vases I think I think it looks very vintage and once you see the end product just let me know in the comments if you think it looks just as nice as a pottery barn vase so once I have that brown layer on I did let that layer dry and uh, once that was dry I started with uh, a beige uh, homemade chalk paint and uh, a white homemade chalk paint and um, I use mostly chalk paints because like I said I wanted the vase to have that matte look so this is what it looks like after the brown has dried and I did a little test patch there on the side uh, before I'm showing you guys just to see what colors that I wanted to use. So this is like a beigey gray color chalk paint that I mixed up 
and oh i use a little bit of acrylic paint uh, this is the cashmere tan so i did use that i think this was the only acrylic paint that i use and i didn't use a whole lot of that color just wanted little bits of extra color in there and this is the white chalk paint and uh I thought this was a little too white, so I did have another chalk paint there uh, that was more watery uh, that I use for a top finish on my products sometimes. So I started using that, dabbing it again and, uh, you know, uh, rubbing it in, doing the same kind of techniques that I did the other layers with. And I love the white chalk paint as a finish on this, like the final finish. And I think it just gives it more of that um, vintage and antique old world kind of look. Uh, and the spots that were a little bit too white or that I thought there was too much of, I kind of went in with my... Uh, black paint and brown paint again and just dabbed over that and uh, muted some of the white out to get the look that I want. So friends, if you have not tried one of these vases before, go to the thrift store, find yourself a beautiful looking vase or like it doesn't have to be a beautiful vase. It can be an ugly vase, uh, but the shape is beautiful and you can make it into a beautiful vase again something like the pottery barn and you don't have to spend like you know two hundred dollars five hundred dollars you spend seven dollars which is what i pay for this huge vase so once you see the final product let me know in the comments i do uh deck it out with some beautiful floral arrangement so let me know in the comments once you see the final product what you think of this one compared to a pottery barn base
for my next DIY, I'm working on a couple of um, signs here or pictures that I thrifted at the Habitat for Humanity last year. I bought a whole bunch of these. Uh, there were pink ones, green ones, I think blue ones. They all had cactus pictures on them and they were only two dollars a piece so i picked a bunch of these up so uh if you've been watching my videos for a while you ha will have seen me um create other uh pieces of art on these and so uh the other ones that i've used in the past so i've painted the whole frame but this one I'm leaving the sides green because I'm going to be uh, decoupaging some beautiful decoupage paper on these. So I'm just covering up that picture with a darker paint. And this is a fusion paint. Um, I can't remember the color off the top of my head right now. But um, this paint, the coverage is unbelievable. It's such an amazing paint. Like... You barely have anything on your brush and um, the paint goes a long way and the coverage is amazing. Like I just put one coat of paint on top of this to cover up that picture and you could not see anything behind it. The paint is an amazing paint. So if you have not tried this paint, I would suggest giving it a try and see what you think. And it has a nice smooth finish as well. So once I had that picture covered up, now I'm using a um, white paint here that I uh, found at the uh, in the oopsie aisle at uh, my local Home Depot. And uh, I put two coats of paint on these, two coats of white paint. And uh, the second coat, I put my homemade white chalk paint on top. And uh, if I would have had like a, a green paint, like the same color as the um, frame, I probably would have used that. Now, if you, like I said, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you will have seen me create some, uh, a beautiful green chalk paint that I used on some projects that was an absolute gorgeous green. I probably, if I had some of that left, I probably would have used it on this. But I didn't, and if I had my time back, I probably wouldn't have painted all the way to the edges. I would probably would have paint, left some of the green there because you'll see after, once I start decoupaging, you will see some of that white underneath. So uh, once the paint was dry, uh, I gave it a light sanding with this um, a sanding uh, sponge there. And then I wiped that down with a damp cloth. So now I'm going to apply my Mod Podge and um, I'm going to let this dry overnight and I'm going to uh, decoupage using the iron on method, which is absolutely awesome, especially when you got a flat surface like this. Uh, it's a great um, decoupage method to try because your um, decoupage paper is going to have like no wrinkles in it like it's so smooth and uh, once I get the decoupage paper on there uh, I do put a layer of um, polyvine uh, wood varnish on top because it's very thin it's much thinner than the Mod Podge and I really like it for a top coat and I use a really soft brush to apply it so that I don't get any wrinkles. So these frames had some little um, hooks on the back, but I don't think it's necessary for a deep set frame like this. So now I'm putting my decoupage paper on this beautiful decoupage paper with the green and this yellow bird on there. So now for your iron friends, you're going to want to, uh, use a dry iron. Don't put any water in your iron. Don't use steam. You want your iron to be um, really hot but no water in there. Okay so you just want a dry iron. 
So I'm just pressing down and sometimes I'll hold it in place for a little while and then I'll move it along and uh, this gets really hot so don't touch that paper because <laughs> it is extremely hot. And uh, so that's what it looks like. So see how smooth that is? No wrinkles. So this is an awesome method I'd love to try. And I have tried this in the past on some flat surfaces like this and it turns out so amazing. So this is um, polyvine wood varnish and like I said it's much thinner than the Mod Podge. So I use a really soft brush to apply it. This is a, a makeup brush I think I had. But you can use any really soft brush and I go very lightly when I'm applying the top coat of the uh, polyvine wood varnish. And if you're looking for some of this varnish or some decoupage paper or napkins, um, I'll leave a 10% off coupon code for Nini's napkins in my description box. Um, and you may find some decoupage papers there and they do sell this polyvine. But this decoupage paper here I got from, um, oh, what is that? Zazzle, I think it is. Uh, but I thought it was going to come with uh, more of a larger image on it. <laughs> but when you order certain sizes, um, I think they kind of shorten the image. Anyway, but look how smooth that turns out. So now it's dry the next day and look how smooth. It's so smooth. So now I'm just taking a fine sanding block and I'm getting that excess um, decoupage paper off there and go down with your uh, sanding block so you know you don't get any ripping on your paper or that shredded kind of look now uh, as i said earlier because this decoupage paper didn't fit like it fit the width but you could see a little bit of that white paint showing through so i did not want that so i fixed that by applying a gold paint around the whole edges whole frame of the sign um, and I had two gold acrylic paints there that I tested out to see what color I wanted to use so I applied it with my finger and then I also show you how I applied it with a sponge brush but I prefer to do it with my finger I think it gives you more control but these turned out absolutely gorgeous with that gold on there and the gold and the green look so beautiful together and I love that yellow bird and the leaves in there. Let me know in the comments what you think of this uh, beautiful decoupage paper and what you think of this um, decoupage iron on method and if you've ever tried it. And let me know if you like that gold that I put on there. I think they look very high end with the gold on there. I absolutely love these. So this is what they look like before and here is what they look like now absolutely gorgeous i love them so friends i hope these two diys gave you some inspiration to create something and don't forget to uh go in the description box and see what all the other um, um, creators have created for you today and if you have not subscribed yet please don't forget to click that subscribe button and leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up i would greatly appreciate that and i really appreciate appreciate all of you sharing some of your time with me today and i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>